Welcome to the Morning Update. I'm Erin Roan. The Queen has finally made it home. Her Majesty's coffin has arrived at Buckingham Palace to cheers from the crowd after being flown into London on the Royal Air Force aircraft from Edinburgh. Thousands of well wishers lined the route from the Air Force Base in West London to watch the motorcade pass and to pay their respects. For the crowds waiting outside the castle, it was a chance to say goodbye. I think she was kind. Yeah. And I think the people could actually talk to her. And I think she concentrated on everybody that she actually spoke to. You could see that from films. The Queen's casket will spend the night at her London home before she will lie in state at Westminster Hall ahead of her funeral. Princess Anne accompanied the casket on the flight from Edinburgh. She's released a statement saying she was fortunate to share the last 24 hours with her mother before her passing. She goes on to say witnessing the love and respect shown by so many on these final journeys has been both humbling and uplifting. Earlier, King Charles met with political leaders in Belfast in Northern Ireland. He spoke of his mother's awareness of her role as a peacemaker. My mother felt deeply, I know, the significance of the role she herself played in bringing together those whom history had separated. A man wearing an Australian football shirt has been charged, accused of shouting abuse at Prince Andrew. The 22-year-old was pulled out of the crowd by police during yesterday's funeral procession for the Queen in Scotland. He will face court on breach of peace charges. To other news now, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese will hold a National Cabinet meeting today ahead of his trip to London for the Queen's funeral. Plans to commemorate Her Majesty's life will be on the agenda, with some premiers also set to push for the September 30 deadline for paid pandemic leave to be extended. Russia is carrying out massive strikes along the Ukrainian front line after being forced to pull back its troops during a fierce counter-offensive. Ukraine claims to have taken back more than 20 settlements in the past day alone. Despite billions being spent on our national education standards over the past four years, there's been no improvement. A new Productivity Commission report has found between 5 and 9% of students each year are failing to meet minimum standards in either literacy or numeracy. And if you haven't upgraded your iPhone yet, this might get you over the line. Tech giant Apple says the new operating system will allow users to edit messages for up to 15 minutes after they've been sent as the iOS 16 update launches across the country. To sport now, the NRL has suspended Knights NRLW player Caitlin Moran for one match over a social media post about the Queen's death. Moran has also been fined 25% of her contract. That fine will be suspended if she completes a series of training programs. Australia has defeated Belgium in the group stage of the Davis Cup. The Aussies winning 3-0 there. And teams have been named for week two of the NRL finals. The Eels have named Mitch Moses. He will still need to pass concussion protocols to play, though. And for even more sports news, make sure you check out the sports update. You'll find it wherever you're listening to this show. In entertainment news now, and Cardi B is giving back. The singer has returned to her old school in New York for a surprise visit, donating 100 grand. She wants the money to go towards after-school programs, including tutoring and music. I'm hoping we can have amazing after-school activities, maybe tutoring, or maybe something fun, maybe a music program. And that's the latest from the Nova Podcasts team. We'll see you later on for another episode of The Update.